I think I need to clean my tape drive. Yeah. Today we're going to be looking at attempting to manually clean a DLT V4 tape drive. Now by manual clean, I mean I'm not going to use the cleaning tape, and instead I'm going to open up the case and manually clean everything with isopropanol and Q-tips. That is definitely not the recommended way of cleaning one of these, but I want to see if I can do that because that'll be more serviceable in the long run. Now this is not a tape drive I rely on, I've invested in the LTO 4 drive series, so this is a perfect drive for me to experiment with this type of cleaning procedure on. First thing though, I need to get that uh, previous tape out of there. Now, actually, also while we're on that, that is the only tape I have for this drive. So let's try and get that out now, which is going to be fun. Basically, I just have to turn it on until it's ready and then eject it. Ah, there we go. All right, well, now that we have the tape out, it's time to try and crack this thing open, so. I haven't done this yet. Definitely have two screws here, two there, a warranty sticker that's illegal there. So let's go ahead and start. All right, what does that get me? Ah, the backslide's off. All right. Excellent. That's funny. Internally, it's just a tiny SATA cable. Wow, so it's just a SATA tape drive. That's kind of cool. Okay, so basically what we have going on in here is we have our actual tape drive, we have a integrated power supply, and then we have a SATA to USB adapter board built in. This whole box is just a SATA to USB adapter, basically. We still need to extract the tape drive itself and then open that up. There are four more screws on the bottom holding the drive in. Excellent. Okay, we're done with the enclosure for now, and this is where it will start to get really fun. So we have to take the top off of the drive, which only appears connected on the top and back. So let's start that. And there we are, we have access to the internals. Man, looking inside this thing, opting to manually clean was the right choice. We got dust balls and hair everywhere. We've got some over here. So probably really need to go at this thing and really clean it out. Cleaning cartridge definitely couldn't have done anything like what really needs to be done in here. Matter of fact, I'm going to be a little bad. I bet you shouldn't do this, but... Alright, so if I push on here, looks like it'll pivot back, and that, uh, and right here is most likely the read-write head. So, do I want to make an attempt at, oh man, look at that giant ball of fluff in there. I imagine I'm going to be inspecting this thing open while it's running to really trace down all the little fluffs in here. Okay, here's a closer look at where the magic happens. I pulled this out of the way. This is most likely the head, like I was saying, and it must move forward, or maybe this moves back. Yeah, there we go. So we can see that piece pivots back. So I'm thinking if I remove these two screws that I can probably lift this metal piece out. Now this is, is worked in down in here and attaches right here, so I'd have to be careful of that. But would like to try and clean that off, although maybe I should just try running it now that I've removed most of the fluff. Perhaps the fluff was just getting stuck in the tape as it moved along. So let's try that first and see how reliable the drive is. As I prep to get this thing running, I opened up the tape drive and noticed that there's even fluff inside of the tape. So that's fun. All right, the drive is currently off, turning it on. No activity, so I assume it's ready. Let's go ahead and install the tape.
I'm seeing a lot of debris on that tape as it moves in there. Alright, it claims to be ready. Alright, I'm going to run the exact same command I ran before, and let's see if it fails now that I've cleaned out all the dust. Now, previously it made it to 773 megabytes. Alright, we're coming up on the failure point of last time. Ah, it died at exactly 773. Fault clean. Alright. Now I might be suspecting the tape is bad. Alright, I'm going to power cycle it, and then let's watch it rewind. Man, there's a lot of tape on it at the zero position. Alright, now I'm going to hit unload. Well, it didn't exactly pass with flying colors there, but getting to 733 megabytes twice tells me that the tape is now probably bad, which makes sense since it's clearly dirty on the inside and fails at the same point. It's most likely that some fluff got in there and scratched it while the tape was going while it was dirty. Could have been me trying to get it working initially, or maybe the previous owners did that when trying to recover whatever remaining data was on this tape. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and put this back together, and then just assume that I can't write anything bigger than, say, 500 megabytes to that tape before it gets to the problematic area. So I'll go ahead and write a smaller file to the tape, and then read it back to verify that the drive is working now. And then in the future, I'll order a new tape that I can use with this drive to demonstrate it properly. Alright, well, now that we have the tape drive most likely fully functional, let's go ahead and archive something. So... I'm going to archive my Devo Flax, which happened to be about 500 megabytes. And there it's finished, and now it will rewind. Now we'll just make somewhere to put it, and we'll go ahead and go to that folder, and now we will read back Devo. There we go, done reading, now to rewind. Now if we and now if we check what we outputted, bam, we get our Devo rips. So let's go back to the flak directory, and this time we'll do cake, which is about 1.9 gigabytes. This should cause the error at 773 megabytes in the transfer, and then we can start to confirm that the tape is bad.
All right, coming up on the problematic area. Different data, same spot. Right, so we can see it throws a clean, but I'm pretty sure that it's actually the tape. I don't know if media should mean that the tape is bad, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the tape. Well, that about wraps up this fairly brief look at this DLT drive. I'm not going to go into too much detail on how you use tape drives with Linux right now. I'm actually going to do another video in the future where I show how to use an LTO, a DLT, and a DAT drive on the same system at the same time. The to tape and from tape bash files that I had created there are a little complicated inside. You may have noticed that you could see a progress meter while you're writing to the tape, but not while you're reading from it. And that's because of how linear tape works. There's You don't have foreknowledge of the data on the tape. So when I cover that, I want to go into it in more detail than I would in this video, where the whole focus was just to get this drive working. So for now, hope you guys enjoyed that, and I'll see you next time.